It's time for another episode of <gasps> Punch It Box. Powerful Commander cards for under a dollar. I'm Mia, and I love cast warping my own stuff. I'm BZ, and I like running with scissors because I didn't think of anything else. Uh, you can go to our Patreon where you can support both of those things for money. It's just you giving your, us your money, and then we give you awesome content in, in, uh, in turn. It's going to be exclusive. There's exclusive stuff on Patreon that you can't get anywhere else. And I would also say that this channel is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. This is where we want you to go to buy some magic cards. Because you're going to buy magic cards anyway. But you can go support the nerds at the same time by buying the magic cards on Cool Stuff. If you buy the stuff on CoolStuffInc.com and use the code NERDS, you can save 5%. That's a lot of percentage. That uh, is at least yes. more than four. I, exactly. And if you wanted to sleeve your deck, I'm thinking Dragon Jewel. They got the best sleeves in the multiverse. Good sleeves. There's an EU and a US link in the description. Click whichever one you feel like looks cooler, and then go to the site and get the sh cards and the sleeves shipped right to you. It's great. We're also sponsored by Moxfield.com. There's going to be an ad somewhere in the video, and you won't be able to guess where it is. And if you guessed, you lied. Also, happy birthday to everyone whose birthday's today, and also your pets. Yes, and also pets' birthdays. We care about pets' birthdays. This is Budget Bombs, powerful commander cards for under a dollar. If you're building on a budget, I gotta say this is probably the best resource on the internet because we've got you covered. We're gonna start with Return of the Witch King. This card is 17 cents, and it's two black green. Each player sacrifices a creature, and if you sacrifice one, you can return any other permanent from your graveyard just right to the battlefield. The effect of returning a permanent is so powerful. Usually these are only creatures or the same type that you're making people sacrifice, but any sort of permanent that might have been destroyed prior, I think is just an amazingly powerful effect. I think the closest we have to this is like Deadly Brew, and that only brings a creature back to your hand. This is like, no, it goes right to the battlefield, and it doesn't have to be a creature. It could just be like that Evolving Wilds you cracked earlier. Return of the Witch King is going to be sick for budget. Yeah, I think that there's a lot of potential with this card. And for only four mana and then hitting everyone with a sacrifice, I think that's such a good deal, you know? Like, there's worlds where you just play this and just snipe, like, two commanders and someone's token, and then you go, here's my seven drop, here's my meteor golem or something. Tossing creatures into your graveyard with all these dredge effects and all of those other types, I think this could be super powerful. And now that Amber's here, we can talk about Selfless Spirit. Selfless Spirit is one in a white for a 2-1 flyer that states if you sacrifice it, all of your creatures get indestructible until end of turn. This is 80 cents and it's definitely a great budget bomb for this price. I think it's so good to get that early drop down and just being able to sacrifice it at instant speed to give all of your creatures indestructible until end of turn, especially in those combat-based metas, definitely a good deal. I mean, it's a lightning rod. It demands a removal spell or else those destroy board wipes just don't work. And it's a nice little cheap flyer so it chips in for like the initiative or the monarch or whatever. You play it on turn two. Forget about it until later and then once you have a great board state, you don't have to pay any mana. It's just going to protect it for free. Plus, with all that little early like chip in damage, that starts to add up over time too. Yeah, I mean, if you throw like four hits of two in, that's, and you get the monarch maybe one of those times, I'm in. We're going to go to another Lord of the Rings one now. This is probably one of my favorite budget cards in the entire set. It's Rising of the Day. It's Tuna Red. Your legendary creatures get plus one, plus oh, and all of your creatures have haste. The key being, this is 15 cents. This is a 15 cent card. It's not rare. It's not going to be in some crazy high demand. So we finally have a three mana haste enabler that doesn't cost a trillion dollars. Like, like... Rhythm of the Wild is like $5 right now, which is ridiculous. Like Hammer of Perforos, even Fervor, those are like not affordable. Yeah, I was actually just going to mention Rhythm of the Wild because that's such an auto-include in so many Gruul decks, and it's so amazing that this can this is only one color, right? So that can slot into all of your mono-red decks with, you know, all of your little, like, tokens and all of that sort of thing. Yeah, it slots into more decks, and it's, what, a tenth of the price? <laughs> like, maybe less? I don't know. I, I don't know how math works. You're the <laughs> math nerd over here. Yeah, sometimes. But uh, I was actually thinking about putting this into a very casual Kalia deck, you know? It where all the fine. Where all the cards that I, in my CEDH one just aren't fitting. Yeah. Just toss it in there. Plus, everything with haste, you know, it's just like another Dragon Temp. Just. Yeah, I think Rising of the Day is going to be, like, top five cards in the whole set for budget. So pick some up because you're going to play them in your budget decks. Let's go to Snap. Snap is one in a blue that says return target creature to its owner's hand and untap up to two lands. I've been playing this in a Zafai deck that BZ just built for me, and it has been amazing. You know, it's that early, just free return creature to its owner's hand. And then also, if you can copy it, you can untap a bunch more lands. Oh, yeah. There's like the floor of this. Eh, you know, it's an unsummon for zero, but the ceiling is like really high. So if your deck can copy the spell or have lands that produce more than one mana, you're now like getting negative mana, you're just profiting mana on, a, on an unsummon, and it's it's it could be real sneaky. It's only 85 cents. Yeah, I played this on turn four. Uh, I had already played a, uh, a copy 
spell prior to this and then snap back two commanders and then just had the entire turn to do whatever I wanted again because I had tapped all four lands. The mana advantage you gain from this card is huge. You're not up cards, you're just spending a card to bounce something, but the tempo you gain and the mana gained back from it is when we're like, spell slinger decks love snap. Absolutely. Plus, just on the commanders, absolutely brutal. Now, nobody wants their six drop bounce. That doesn't feel good, but I don't care. I'm still going to snap it. What's up next on the list of budget bombs? Well, it's another Lord of the Rings card, and it's actually two, but we're going to start with Barad Dur, which is 83 cents. It's a black land that enters untapped if you control a legend, and it says XX black, a mass orcs X. If a creature died this turn, the thing that I'm looking at with this card is, does it do anything? Oh, yes, it does do anything sometimes. Does it enter untapped all the time? Well, pretty much, unless you control a legendary creature, that's pretty much all the time. We're playing Commander. That's the legendary creature format. So this is kind of a swamp that just sometimes makes a token for three or five mana if a creature died this turn. And a lot of black decks, that doesn't seem that difficult. Yeah, I think that these, especially in budget, are going to be a real powerhouse. I'm excited to play all five, and I was hoping that the whole cycle was going to be less than a dollar, but they're not. Only the black and the red ones are. The red one is Mines of Moria, which is 80 cents, and it can pay four and exile some cards from your graveyard to make treasure tokens. That's a nice little buildup of mana. If you don't have anything to do the turn before, you can maybe pseudo ramp into like an eight drop or two five drops the next turn. Again, it's a red land that almost always enters untapped. Why wouldn't we play that if it has upside? Yeah, I think that these... I wish, as you said earlier, I wish that the rest were budget-friendly too, but I think these will go up in price once people realize how absolutely powerful they can be, especially in the lower power levels. Could just be an issue of, like, the demand is not that high and the supply is ridiculous because everybody cracked a million boxes of this uh, set, so these might just stay budget bombs forever. That's great. I'm going to put them in every single red and black budget deck I can get my hands on. I mean, I think these are, like, one- and two-color cards. Don't go too ham. Don't put it in your four-color decks, but I think... One and two color red and black decks just want these cards. Yeah, it's a good place to put your mana late game, too, if you have nothing else to do with them. Yeah, so. I mean, it's about as good a place to put your mana as Moxville.com, the best way to build a deck site online, the best, way to, the, best, the, best, the best way to build a website on the internet. If you're trying to build a commander deck and not a website, I would recommend going to Moxville.com because it is a simple, intuitive, fashion-forward, laser-eye-friendly website. Laser eyes on the full moons only. However, you know what you can do every single day? You can update to Cheapest, where we are building budget decks, sometimes $20, sometimes $50. But either way, Moxfield.com is how we're able to track those prices. Yeah, you can build a budget deck without having to update everything or keep an eye out or go, well, the deck says $68, but really I built it for $20, and only you know that? No, everybody knows that. If you just update to Cheapest, it's like click three buttons, Click three little tabs, and then you're all set. And the deck is completely updated, and it saves you probably days of work. Yeah, I don't think I could build budget decks without Moxfield.com. I don't think you could either, so get over there. Absolutely. Next on the list is one of the cards that I've been really excited to play with. It's Mere Convert. It was two mana for a 2-1, toxic one mana dork that says if you tap it and pay two life, you can make one mana of any color. I've been using this in my Atraxa deck because, you know, four colors is really hard to get sometimes. But I think this is a good fit anywhere considering it's colorless. And if you have just not a ton of early plays and you don't need that mana immediately, you can chip in for a little bit of damage, especially with Toxic. Yeah, you love Toxic. I don't think that Toxic is going to matter to most people. It's a two-mana mana direct that makes any color. You might be saying, why not just mention Ornithopter of Paradise? Because we already mentioned Ornithopter of Paradise. That card is just as good, maybe better. It's like four cents, but we already talked about it. So we're going to give you a refreshing second choice. I think this card still goes in a lot of decks, even if you don't care about Toxic. Just a two-mana mana dork that makes any color. I already like it every more than every one of the like gold mirror, silver mirror. I don't really play those cards. I think for me to want to play a two mana dork, it has to make any color. Yeah. No, I absolutely agree with that. I was really, really excited to see this because it's so cheap and two life in a 40 life format is Come almost on. nothing. Come on, that's nothing. Yeah. Basically, might as well just say gain two life. Two life in the long run of a commander game means almost nothing when you can gain that back just as easily with certain things like an extort trigger. Yeah, it's well worth ramping with to it. If you have synergy, obviously this card goes up. Like caring about artifacts, caring about creatures, that's when you want to play this over like a signet or a talisman. Let's go to Nurox Stealth Suit. This is a two mana equipment, equips for one. The equip creature has Shroud, but the little trick here is you could pay blue, blue at instant speed to attach it to a creature you control. So this is 85 cents, and it's a weird little equipment that Mia plays that I kind of forgot about. No offense <laughs> to Nurox Stealth Suit, but 
What it gives you, aside from being budget, because Lightning Greaves, not a budget card. So this is going to be played alongside or instead of Swiftfoot Boots. But what it gives you instead is the ability to instant speed equip it. But the fact that it's blue kind of helps because you might go, well, I don't want to hold up two mana to just do that. But you hold up two mana to either play a counter spell or your snap. Or if someone targets one of your creatures, you throw a Nurok Stealth Suit on it. And what it actually means when you pass with two mana up is that no one's going to target your stuff. I think it's really tricky, and I really like the Nurok Stealth Suit because it's the instant speed. You know, it's like the cranial plating of, ooh, maybe I should swing with this. And then, oh, no, it's actually equipping it at instant speed. It's like, oh, maybe it's over here. Well, guess you forgot about it. Gotcha. Yeah. You got to pay attention to this one. <laughs> Your spell fizzles now. Yeah, exactly. There's there's not really anything they can do about it. It's just they go, murder your thing. You're like, hmm, that's a fair, that's a fair choice for you to make. Uh, but too bad you forgot about Nurok Stealth Suit. I'll equip it. Yeah, plus there's so many instant speed two blue spells that I am just like, oh, if I see you pass with that, it's not even just the counter spell, they're snap. There's so many other ones where I'm just like, ooh, better look the other way. Yeah, <laughs> I think if you have a lot of instants and ways to spend two mana, this is a card that'll be even better than uh, Swift Foot Boots because it'll basically say your entire team has shrouds. Yeah, and I play this in John Arenicus, uh, and that was definitely a good pick for it because it is a $20 budget, but any any commander that really demands an answer and also you can keep that double blue up, I think really could use this card. Yeah, let's go to the next one. It's another Lord of the Rings card, but this is one of my favorites. What is it? <laughs> It's Taunt from the Rampart. It's three red-white that says goad everything, and the creatures that you goaded can't block. It's 77 cents right now. This is just kind of like Disrupt Decorum on some sort of performance-enhancing drug. It's no blocks. Every single bit of power on the board, assuming there's not a board wipe or sweeper or something, is going to connect to someone's face. It's not going to be your face, and there's no stopping it. I'm really excited to put this in my Bailoff Noble Heritage deck. There's already so many good payoffs for combat there, like like goading everything with the commander itself, but making sure that they can't block, that means it's just going to someone's face or someone's planeswalker or something like that. It's just gonna end games. Like I, this card feels like a win condition. There needs to be an answer for it. Like if I play this and make it so that all our creatures are threats now and someone else wipes the board, none of my creatures were even the ones threatening the damage. I could have no creatures in that exchange and be thrilled. Are you putting the, this in Liara Porter? I'm putting this in every Boros budget deck I can. I feel like this is just going to be like an I win button, especially for budget, you know, where the boards get clogged and the games are a little slower. This is what I'm like excited about. I'm really excited to test this out. I'm going to stick with the theme of messing with all your opponents with Dismantling Waves, 96 cents and it's two and a white. And for each opponent, you get to destroy an artifact or enchantment they control. And there's even another bonus. Besides just being a straight up three mana sorcery speed, three for one, you can cycle it for six white white at instant speed to discard it to draw and then just destroy all artifacts and enchantments, which could just take some decks off the map entirely. You know, I've been playing Druid of Purification, one of your favorites, but this is another amazing three for one that I'm excited to try in some of the budget decks. There's so many sticky artifacts and enchantments that I would just love to get rid of, and I have single target removal for like one and a white, like disenchant. Yeah. But three for one? That's even better. That's amazing. Yeah, you lose instant speed, but oh man, I just compare this card to like Cross and Grip in my head, and it's like, all right, instant speed, guaranteed you take out one thing and they can't respond. It's like, or you could slow down to sorcery speed and get triple the effect. That, to me, is worth going down to sorcery speed. And also, I don't even like Cross and Crypt. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of like downgrading instant speed to sorcery speed. But when it's two extra targets for one more mana, I think I can live with it. Yeah, it's like, I'll, I'll be all right. I'll dry my tears. I'll put in another instant speed thing somewhere. How about Fiery Inscription, Mia? Fiery Inscription is tuna red for a gutter snipe-like effect, and the ring also tempts you. Yeah, it's an enchantment that just zaps everybody for two whenever you play an instant or sorcery. Can you say Spellslinger? Uh, absolutely. I might actually slot this into the Zavai deck that we were just talking about. Well, Amber's being just a complete gremlin right now. <laughs> Get out of here. She's so disruptive, but we can talk about how disruptive Fiery Inscription is going to be on your opponent's life totals when you chain Snap into Opt into Vandal Blast or something, and then they all just take six damage, which you're doing 18 damage for three spells in that scenario. How about I don't, storm decks? Yeah. Storm decks are going to be where you want the storm, spell slingers, anything that you can cast. Like, man, this is so funny that we mentioned snap, because it's going in every one of these spell slinger decks. I'm just like, wow, you can cast a spell, get an effect, trigger something, and then not have spent any mana. That's perfect. 
Yeah, plus the fire inscription plus the gutter snipe effects if you have them both in the same deck. That four damage per spell for each opponent, that's nasty. That adds up over time. Ten not, of those, not very much time. Yeah, 10 of those, your opponents are dead. Yeah, the, it's six damage every time you cast a spell. Excited to pay 15 cents for this one. Also excited about Tireless Provisioner. It's 94 cents. First ever appearance on the budget bombs. It is two and a green for a 3-2, and lands entering the battlefield will give you either a food or a treasure. It's Tireless Tracker, but for the other two main artifact tokens, basically you're always going to make a treasure, but you have the option to make a food if you're like super low on life for some reason. This card's better than Lotus Cobra. It's a green staple in landfall, and it finally fell down below a dollar. BZ was so excited when this became a budget bomb. I was pretty hyped. But I'm so surprised that it actually is a budget bomb right now with all the food synergies in Lord of the Rings. Yeah, it might not even be a budget bomb. By the time this comes out, we're recording it like a day before it's supposed to come out. It might not even be a budget bomb, but it is right now. It's 94 cents. I'd you be should surprised. buy it anyway. Yeah, I'd be surprised if it stayed a budget bomb right now. Yeah, exactly. So get your Tireless Provisioner, put it in your landfall deck, put it in your food deck, put it in your treasure deck. Be happy about it. Next on the list is Junkwinder. It is five blue blue uh, with the affinity for tokens. It's a five six that says whenever a token un enters the battlefield under your control, you can tap an opponent's creature and it doesn't untap during its untap step. My friend has a Jahira uh, deck with a blue background and it has been absolutely brutal in that. This is his pet card. I went, ooh, seven mana. That's like a lot for this. But no, <laughs> when your entire board is iced down just because of a few foods or a few treasures, you will be sorry later. And then you also go, oh, it's two mana. It's not seven mana. Two mana, five, six, 18 cents. Tap all my stuff. You have to basically answer this in the lower power combat budget metas, which is, of course, what we're talking about. We're playing budget. In the games where the board gets clocked up, you can kind of bully a player out. You go, ice your thing down, ice your thing down, ice your thing down, attack you, you can't retaliate, and everyone else has the same option of like, would I just want to kill this person? Sometimes they do. Yeah, it's a it's a powerful card. You can uh, make enemies really, really quick, especially if you can get those tokens out super fast, because then you're just icing down everyone's board. You don't have to just pick one player. Yeah, you can kind of mix and match with Junkwinder. I like Junkwinder. I also like Bushwhack. And the reason I like Bushwhack is because it is going to be honorarily inducted into the MDFC Hall of Fame. This is 29 cents. Mia may disagree. It is green. Search your library for a basic land, put it into your hand, or target creature you control fights a creature you don't control. How is that not an MDFC? Well, it's not an MDFC because it do you have to pay mana for it, and I don't believe that's what an MDFC... I believe MDFCs enter the battlefield tapped. So yeah. if I take a planes out of my deck and I put in Kabira Takedown, it now costs a mana whenever I play it. You just can't play it on turn one unless you play a forest first. It's basically a tapped green MDFC that color fixes you. I think this card is actually underrated. I didn't view it like this before, and I just kind of thought it was a throwaway draft uncommon. But seriously, if you're in a low-budget deck, this fixes you and is removal. It's a nice double whammy. You can kind of count it as a, an honorary land. Like, it's really close. Though I don't view it as an MDFC, I do have it in a Vrondis deck, a $20 Vrondis deck, and it has been amazing in that because it's either get the land that you need super early, because you know if you're just trying to find your mountain or something, you just color fix really easily, or it's just the fight spell, and you and I've been able to get tokens from that, you know, oh Vrondis, fight that, you know, two two over there. Get a five four. Yeah, it's been absolutely amazing in the decks with synergy with it. Some decks really want it. Some decks are going to be like, oh, I'm the fight deck, but I'm talking about. If you're playing a green budget deck, I would consider this period. It's actually pretty good. Not an MDFC though. Let uh, me just let me just make that real sure clear. It's an MDFC. Mm -hmm. I think okay. it's from Zendikar Rising, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll uh, we'll check that on Scryfall later. Yeah, we'll check it out. Next on the list is Tivit, Seller of Secrets, for three white, blue, and black for a five-five that says when it enters the battlefield or hits a player, you the entire table votes. They can either give you a clue or a treasure, and you always vote twice. I'm actually surprised to see this in budget bombs, because I've seen it pop up once or twice in CEDH. It says okay, this card's actually just like dirty. It's super good, doesn't look good. It's 51 cents. This card makes itself four votes for four permanents, and then an additional vote for you. You get six permanents for six mana. So this is like secretly an artifact card, I think. You're gonna get probably two treasures. That's what you want. And then three clues. So this is a six mana thing that replaces two of the mana right away. It gives you five artifacts that can enter, die, be sacrificed, or whatever. Does it all again if you can connect or flicker it. My God, this card is like really sick. I have it in an artifact deck right now, and I'm gonna look to see where else I can play this. 
Yeah, I definitely am excited to see all the voting synergies with this too, because voting twice, I think that's just super exciting uh, part of the mechanic. I think it's like never gonna happen, but if you build like as a Tivit Commander deck, you could definitely put the little votes in like, oh, let's sprinkle some votes in like, ooh, I'll just take a little extra vote for me. I think artifact synergies are definitely com very common and that's awesome but i really enjoy voting synergies and that sort of thing so building it around that is how i would play it and i actually might try this later i think you should go in the 99 i think you should go in like your four color brea type decks or your Wurnog, Bjorna decks, or your Tivit decks. This card is sweet. It's nasty. The only thing is it's like six mana, so it's competing with a lot of like other shenanigans at the top end. Just keep an eye out, but if you've got like ingenious artillerists or uh, reckless fireweaver, this is dealing five damage to each opponent. Next is a card I really can't shut up about. It's Curtain's Call, 23 cents, five and a black, kind of. It says Undaunted, so it costs one less for each opponent you have, which means it's two and a black, because you have three opponents. This is a commander game. And you destroy two target creatures. If you're playing Murder, number one, please stop. Number two, what if you played this card instead? Hero's Downfall, please, no, please. Planeswalkers don't need to be destroyed by spot removal. That is very rarely relevant. What is relevant is just getting a whole second copy of a Murder right now. Still an instant speed, even easier to cast. I haven't put this in my own decks, but I've played it in the Commander Cube that BZ and I run all the time, and it's so powerful. You know, you can always joke the, oh, there, it's one for le one less for each opponent, and then you know have people scoop uh, in response. But <laughs> that's fine by me. That's even more value. Oh, absolutely. And it's a destroy target player. You pay four mana. This is some of the most efficient removal that you can get on a budget because you're not getting your deadly rollicks. You're not getting your snuff outs on budget bombs, at least. And I think you give up a bit of that versatility. Like for three mana, I like to play certain things like Chaos Warp and uh, Generous Gift to destroy or get rid of any permanent. But for two creatures, I think this is an amazing rate. And you trade it. versatility for efficiency. And I think you could trade this video for the next budget bombs, which is from a month ago. You could see. Me talk about budget bombs. And remember, Bushwhack is an MDFC. No, it's not. Yes, it is.